Now for our last topic here, we have that network unlock feature that was a very highly requested new feature so that users would be able to not have to deal with punching in a password really two times, once to get the machine powered on, and then a second time to log into that computer. Well, Microsoft has assembled a variety of somewhat strange different components together to create this network unlock solution. And rather than step you through the entirety of its build, I think it's more important for us, at least at this point, to understand what the high level steps are in configuring network unlock. Because most of the things we're doing here involve, well, number one, either installing components that we either have installed already and have already seen, or dealing with some complex issues like down here with certificates and certificate templates that may be a little out of scope for us here for the 411. So let's talk very specifically about what you have to have so that you know what you need to implement should you want to incorporate network unlock in your BitLocker infrastructure. So number one, you have to have machines with the UEFI infrastructure, no traditional BIOS infrastructure. That firmware also has to have a DHCP driver that's built into firmware. Now, from what I understand, most UEFI machines these days have that DHCP driver built into them, but not all machines are UEFI. So most of the older equipment that you have won't support that UEFI firmware. You will absolutely want to make sure that you support this first because without that, you can't use network unlock. Now, in order for network unlock to work, it has to interact with the network using protocols that only exist during the early parts of the boot cycle. And there are only a very small number of solutions that exist out there to support the proper networking you would need during that early portion of the boot cycle. The first is Windows Deployment Services. If you think about WDS, what's its job? It is to listen for clients that are effectively bare metal, that have no existing operating system, that are simply powering on and looking for anyone on the network that will listen. For this reason, WDS makes a great bootstrapping solution for these clients because it's the solution that can listen for when clients are booting up and need to get access to the rest of the network. Now, WDS has to exist on a Windows Server 2012 or R2 system for this to work. That's where all the bits are there uh, in order to support what we're doing. Also, anytime you're dealing with WDS, you have to also have a DHCP server on that network. Now, this DHCP server is very specially different because it cannot be on the WDS server itself. It also cannot be on your domain controller. Now, this goes counter to a lot of environments where you have the DHCP services that are co-located with your domain controllers or in smaller environments that are co-located with WDS. So you will have to separate those out in order to support BitLocker network unlock. Obviously, you have to have the network unlock feature installed onto that server. So you install that uh, network unlock feature onto a server somewhere to support all the extra bits that are necessary for the unlock componentry to work. One of the more challenging aspects of this implementation, especially since we haven't talked yet about certificates and templates and customizing them in great detail, is the custom 2048-bit user certificate template that Network Unlock requires. Now, I'm, admittedly, I'm kind of punting on this topic and the details because in order to make the configuration of this template, you need to duplicate the user template, make some additional configuration changes, bump up potentially the cipher strength of that certificate to at least 2048 bit, along with a couple of other minor configurations. So I'll, I'll pitch to the idea that you're going to need a certificate template. You're going to need a certificate on the WDS server in order to support this traffic and the authentication therein in order to make this work. In addition, you'll have to have those group policy settings configured that we took a look at just a second ago. Those are the group policy settings that enable the use of network unlock. And then lastly, and most importantly for our environment here is in order to use this, you have to have TPM chips on all the machines that are participating. And in our VMware Workstation environment, we don't have any TPM chips. They are just not something that is virtualizable here with VMware Workstation. So you will have to have the TPM plus pin protector enabled on all the machines that will be participating. And then once you set these all up and got them interconfigured and working then, uh, what, what you get out of the solution is effectively the abilities for machines to be booted up on the LAN using hardwired connections, not using wireless, and to automatically get through that initial need for a password that you would normally have if you didn't have network unlock configured.